Viral Art is a platform for artists, galleries and museums to exhibit and explore and acquire art pieces inside virtual reality. Um, and also it's a platform that enables general public uh, to engage into an art space and culture space through virtual reality. But we also created a mobile application which gives you augmented reality features mixed reality application which gives you holograms that are floating around your space and of course a classical website because we need to uh, um, engage the market from many different sites at the same time. Here a lot has uh, fantastic opportunities not only for galleries but also for private collectors. Imagine also the limited the spaces of collectors are, are limited and uh, up to 90% of art uh, collected by private uh, collectors is stored somewhere in cellars or in archives and uh, that's a pity because even if uh, these collectors don't want to make this art to totally um, accessible by everybody but they want to share it with their peers, with other collectors and Bureau Art is the first time with the possibility that they can uh, make their own art shows from their private collections accessible to exactly the people they want them to show it. Actually at the same time there were some people that, that asked me, uh, uh, can we create exhibitions in virtual reality? Um, and we said, of course, yes, we can, we can create a gallery space in virtual reality and then we can put our pieces on the walls. But the moment of realization that this can be a platform, that we can create a platform that everybody can use and everybody can create exhibitions, it just opened up my mind that, that this is what we should focus on. Not creating exhibition per exhibition, but actually create one space where everybody can use and, and um, everybody can, can actually put their art pieces there for exhibiting and for sales. Circumstances in Switzerland are very, very favorable. So uh, we have uh, access to good banking uh, um, services. Um, we know what the regulator allows us and what not. Uh, we have uh, stability that is also perceived as very strong from outside, especially in a, in a market like the art market which uh, has a non-tangible good in, in some ways. People are strongly dependent on trust. And uh, I think Switzerland, one of the key benefits of, of Switzerland's uh, perception in, uh, in the whole world is trust. So an art company uh, that, that also, or an art platform that deals with crypto and that deals with, uh, with the blockchain operating out of Switzerland, I think is a, is a fantastic um, starting point. I think that VR or art plays a very central, very important role um, when it comes to democratizing the whole art space. Art, as we know it, is a space where only a very, very few people have access to. Only a very, very few people essentially know and have information about where art pieces are coming from, who has had them before. And by bringing blockchain, to the whole art space, uh, VR all art is essentially, essentially taking out those information asymmetries. Um, so, so by putting a piece of art on the blockchain that VR all art creates, everybody has the same access to that amount of information, to, to where it has been before, to, to how much, uh, how many, how many uh, units of a specific currency have been paid for it in the past. And, and this is information that is needed if you want to make future transactions um, that are fair that are democratized in a way. The main thing for the local artists is to go global through through internet. There is no other way you can just go and show your work to some galleries and they say, oh, how come we never heard of you? That, that doesn't happen. That's the, another dimension that is added to their work. It's very hard to transport all of your work all the time, all over the world. This is the way I think it's really the future and I strongly believe in the virtual reality as a part of everyday life. It's scary for most of the people, especially older ones, or, um, but definitely that's the way if you can, you can uh, save time and money to appreciate and enjoy somebody's work of art. The gallery is called Artemophosis and they are dealing in Cuban art. So Cuban art does not travel that well, as you can imagine. So he was the first gallerist to see that the special problems he has, especially with location and, and transport and stuff of his uh, specific art, 
can be very, very good um, managed with the rollout. Adding an additional dimension. So, for example, if you have an exhibition in a regular space and you want to add an additional dimension, you want to um, recreate a much bigger space or you want to show parts of a collection which are not visible, that would be possible. Um, one of the things I'm looking at is telling more um, about a work or uh, telling a full story, uh, telling a story from different angles. Um, for a viewer, it's interesting to come into a gallery and experience a work of art, but if there's nobody to explain it to you, or if you don't feel like reading a catalogue, you walk in, you give it those 15 seconds, and then you walk out. If the work is able to tell you a story about how it was created, what the sketch phase was like, um, what was the reference for the artist, what was the starting point from the artist? Was it a dream from his childhood? Was it um, a lullaby her mother was singing to her? Was it um, something, I don't know, a photograph scene or um, appropriate from the internet or so forth? It's possible to embed these things into a VR piece, which would then tell you more about it. It's okay, but if we are exhibiting art pieces, then we can exhibit museum artifacts also then it became a merger of not only art space, but also museum space. Because museums are not only showing artifacts, uh, uh, but also showing art pieces as pieces of our history. So if we merge these two in one platform and say, okay, this is the same platform that can exhibit um, old masters that are usually stored in museums and also contemporary art, then we have a whole new ecosystem where uh, we are driving more uh, people inside because there are so many content to be explored and to be seen. For example, for galleries, there are so many different use cases. We are solving so many problems with, with VRL art for them um, that uh, I think that they will come to realize that bringing galleries into virtual reality is something that actually connects uh, uh, real gallery space and virtual reality space. Of course, your local gallery then can present in New York, London and Hong Kong without actually moving the art pieces in all of these different markets. So we are talking about opening up the whole art market for a new uh, uh, level of accessibility. Possibilities from virtual to uh, actual realities are boundless. Uh, I believe that the, the value of a of, uh, couple of billion of sales of art pieces online can only grow. What we are trying to do with VRL Art is not scrap away parts of online sales that are happening right now. Actually, to, we want to open up a whole new market segment of people that never bought art online or never bought art at all. I think this will change in the ne next couple of years. It will change a lot. First of all, because of the uh, high prices of renting of art spaces. And second of all, if the revolution comes, and the virtual reality will happen for the art space. It doesn't matter if we do it or someone else does it, it will happen. It's just a matter of, of who, who does it first. We are trying to be the first ones, but the, this revolution will happen. And then who comes first to the art space in virtual reality will be the winner probably in the gallery space because it will be democratized.